there's a lot of noise out there when it comes to AI, and I think it's a good time to just step back a little bit and let's do a little comparison of some of the myths versus, versus reality. When it comes to AI, you can't have your cake and eat it too. There's always has to be some trade-offs, right? And that's what I want to talk about here today. Think about it this way. Does it have to be a choice? Do I, can I only have privacy and control or can I gain the benefits of AI? Do I have to choose one or the other? And there's a lot of choices when it comes to AI and it gets back to even things like sizing. Like think about when we were kids. How many of you played this game? Guessing the number of jelly beans in the jar. As adults, this has changed a little bit. Now it's like this. How many GPUs do I have in the jar? It can be difficult to size these AI workloads and figure this out. And this is where sometimes that complexity can give us some pause in terms of what do I do or where do I invest? Oftentimes conventional wisdom would say, well, you must need so many GPUs. You must need hundreds or thousands of GPUs to run an application. So therefore, I should just put everything in the cloud. Well, let's put that to the test. Question for you, see if you get this one right. We're running an AI code assistant inside Broadcom. And what we're looking at is the density here. So let's say we started with a thousand software engineers. How many GPUs would I need to support a thousand software engineers with an AI code assistant? You ready for the answer? Think you got it? One GPU. We can get a thousand software engineers on one NVIDIA H100. And I mention this because for a lot of these AI inference applications, it's often not as bad as you think. You can often do a lot more with a lot less when you have the right architecture. This has led us to private AI. This is about taking the AI model, bringing it to anywhere that your data happens to reside, giving you the flexibility and control in terms of having ownership of your artificial intelligence destiny. And this could be anywhere. I can run these services, bring these models into my enterprise data center. I could also do it at an edge site. This could be any edge. This could be your remote office. This could be a temporary emergency response. The bottom line is with the private AI approach, I have this consistent way to deliver AI services and applications anywhere that I happen to operate. Private AI also gives you choice. It gives you choice of AI models and services. It gives you choice of hardware accelerators that I can run these AI services on. It gives me choice of servers that I can use as well. So this is a way that's effectively future-proofing your AI investments. As things change, well, you can simply pivot and roll with that as well. Your data stays private and stays underneath your control. And this is key. I'm able to maintain control of my data. I keep my data in my own repositories. So this way it stays close. I have the flexibility to just pull that data in and I'm keeping the ownership. It's not going into somebody else's proprietary data store that would make it very difficult for me to get back. And if we think about AI models and services, the key here is I, I wanna use the model that I need for the job. I don't need a model that has knowledge of everything in the world. Think about it this way. Do I need a model that has in-depth knowledge of dental hygiene? I don't want a chatbot asking me, when is the last time you flossed? And if we think about it going further, these expert models that you're seeing, they're happening everywhere. You know, whether this is the newer models from Mistral or Llama or DeepSeek, this approach to reasoning is giving me a tremendous amount of flexibility. It's allowing me to use smaller models, which is giving me more control and allowing me to use less hardware resources, less power, and you're getting more efficiencies. And driving these efficiencies isn't just something that we're thinking about here at Broadcom, and even outside of the private AI approach. Hyperscalers are doing these things too, but the difference is with us, these efficiencies and gains are going into your pocket, and that's key. With these efficiency gains, so specifically pooling and sharing your AI capacity, what this is enabling you to do is to take that set of AI infrastructure, consolidate it down, and then run your applications more efficiently on them. We're able to help organizations drive that AI capacity, in many cases, upwards of 90% utilization. What does this mean for you? It means fewer GPUs. It means less power that I have to deliver to my data centers. So I'm having less hardware and infrastructure costs and lower energy requirements. 
Again, these are optimizations that you, you're able to bring back to your own business and run more AI services or do what you see with it. What we're seeing in terms of the lower cost with this private AI approach, you might see a three to five X lower total cost of ownership by partnering with us. So here's the thing, we think differently. We start with the problem statement focused around what is the most efficient way, what is the most flexible way to solve the problem. And we work backwards from there. We don't want to follow conventional thought because we know there's better ways out there. At Broadcom, you know what we call that type of thinking? Just like today, it's just a typical day. We spent over $10 billion on R&D last year and we are not slowing down. We'd really like to partner with you, so let's talk.